Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Jofo here, and I am back on some Pillars of Eternity. We're going to continue what we were doing. You in the headed last into the episode. wilderness? Figured you'd be out of here in a flash after the fighting died down. Most people don't stick around after they figure out the ogres are making regular visits. I would have helped fight them monsters off, you know. If I didn't think I'd just get in the way. And with you there to handle things, uh, everything turned out well enough, didn't it? Don't see why Havrick's still sour at me. Oh, Havrick's the innkeeper over at the Grave's Rest. I may have been hiding in the inn when the fighting started. The raid didn't improve his disposition any. Did you know he has a whole case of Fenland liquor in there? I keep offering to buy it off him, but he says he's saving it up for when the batteries open again. As if we're gonna last that long. <laughs> Anyhow. He said he'd thrash me up and down the mountain if I didn't leave him be. That's, uh, <laughs> that's what Havrick said, actually. Look, I'm not proud of it, but I'm no warrior. What am I gonna do? Throw a net on them? They say a single drop changes your life. You'll never want to have a drink of anything else. It's delusional is what it is. Point of fact, what with you dealing with ogres and everything, maybe you'd, you know... Be willing to help me out. Oh, bravo. Subtle indeed. Avrik keeps all the good stock in the inn cellar. Out of sight, you see. I mean, it's bound to be under lock and key, but... I'm sure he wouldn't miss a single bottle. Not with everything that's going on. Shh, all right, keep it down. I didn't mean anything by it. But if you happen to come across some, then maybe you could share... Wow. What a dick. Oh, hello. Heard I might find you here. Pleasure to meet you. I'm the uh, captain of the militia around here. Really? I didn't see you during the attack. See, I was uh, guarding the Grave's Rest. Someone had to make sure those ogres didn't burn it all down like <laughs> they did Katie's house. Damn shame that. I wanted to catch you before you went running off into the wilds. See, there's a few dangerous folk you might be on the lookout for. Plus, if you're heading out to Long Watch Falls, I thought you might could pick up a thermal pearl for me. Uh, we got our share of crazies out here. Most of them aren't even from the village. Latest group I'd heard of were the Gleaming Society and the Sisterhood of the Slaked Skull. Sounds cool. But Renengill, or Renengill? Renengill. I think it's Renengill. Set aside some bounty money to see that these troublemakers were taken care of. You bring me the heads of their leaders, and I'll give you the payment. Crazy pack of radicals that want to topple governments and kill the wealthy. Makes the war of defiance look like a f food fight. Duck Aver and the regents of Red Saris both declared them illegal, which is probably the only thing the two would agree on. Anyway, check Long Watch Falls to see uh, to the east. That's where they were last seen. Who leads the sisterhood? That'd be Metzla. All the members of the sisterhood worship Barath and sending as many folk back to the wheel as they can. They've been poking around Durgan's battery, and Whale only knows why. But you can understand why no one around here was pleased to hear about it. Passed through town recently, didn't stay long, but they stopped at the Temple of Andra. You might see if Lafta knows something. If you come across them, be careful. They're unpredictable. That's the thing. I already found it. I just need someone else to go out and get it. I saw it in the hot springs up near Longfall, Longwash Falls. Would have grabbed it myself, but that's when I looked around and saw the Lagafeth. Would have been filthy of them. Fifty of them. I would have fought, but I started to wonder what the rest of the stalwart of stalwart would do without me. So I ran for the sake of the village, of course. <laughs> and you're a coward, but that's okay. What's the thermal preliminary? They form in the hot springs something to do with all the minerals in the water. 
It smells kind of funny, but they full of, they're full of minerals. Just have to crumble them into a pint. Really? You just... Like I said, the pearl's in on in one of the thermal pearls near the Longwash Falls. Shouldn't be too hard to spot. It's east of Stalwart. Got some nice views of the valley, but most folks avoid it these days. Plenty of wilder nearby, and it only takes a few inches of snow to block a pass. If you're heading out that way, I'd suggest taking talking to Thirsk. He might have something to help you deal with the Lagufith. What did you say, who? No, it wasn't him. I don't know where I'm going to find him. It's here. Nope. Don't want Tenna's house. I need to find. There should be a temple somewhere. No. Oh, stuff I didn't pick up. Oh, yeah. Give me your garnets. And your garments. Fantastic. Uh, back up here. <sighs> Feels like it's hardly worth putting the huts back up. <sighs> Better than standing out here shivering. Mm hmm. Fresh fish! Freshly caught! Fresh fish! Fresh effigy's eyes! Hit <laughs> the hell? <laughs> A dozen pairs of globular eyes stare up piteously from the discarded head of the ca day's catch. A wash in a pungent sea of fins and innards. Sift through the fish scraps. Your hand runs through against something round and fleshy the size of a melon. It is smooth and scaleless, and parts seem to have to be covered in hair, a discarded head perhaps, but not that of a fish. With one hand on either side of the head, you begin to lift it out of the barrel only to have it leap from your grasp as the head's owner springs over the lip of the barrel and in an eruption of fish chunks that rain down over the market stall. Uh, what? The man who leapt from the barrel stands facing you nearly naked, save for a loincloth. A drizzled and drizzled in fin viscera. Wow! He is covered head to toe in scars, tears and punctures, and the th thorny imprints of lashings most are faded like old memories is this like a monk or something despite that the condition of the man's body is remarkable the drooping skin of his flanks and elbows the only evidence of his advanced age his face is placid but the rest of him appears prepared for anything you must forgive Zala I was not expecting you <laughs> he looks you in the eyes at first but his gaze drifts now and then settling on strange parts of your face as though discarded distracted by new discoveries if he is at all flustered, he gives no d indication. Sarah so scratches behind his ear, dismay. Resting my eyes, I thought, waiting for the Malkacho to bring me insight. It would seem I dozed. A good thing my master was not alive to see it. Are you. Uh, are you real? <laughs> yes? Of course. I meant no offense. But I find it is best to ask when Malkachoa is involved. A small white mushroom. I have heard it called snowcap in these lands. It can reveal the true nature of many things. A teacher, not an owner. Zawa is a free man. As free as any of us. Yeah, this is the monk. I was freeing myself from vanity. Okay. Did he say sanity or vanity? Consider. 
How can one be vain who is bathed in the smell of dead fish? I had the idea when I passed this way earlier. I am pleased with the results so far. He smiles at a woman whose head is swiveled towards him as she passed by. As she passes by, a look of revulsion on her face distracted. Her toes catch on a stone and she nearly falls on her face. He claps his hand together. <laughs> yes, quite pleased. From battle, yes. I left them upon my enemies. These were struck against fear. These against pleasure. These against hatred. Those down there against greed and doubt. And these, these were for vanity. I cannot take credit for all of them, but I did most of the good ones. I put them there in battle to remind myself what is real. And what is not. Our worst enemies are inventions of the mind, pleasure, fear. When we see them for what they are, we become unstoppable. I feel I have been close, but never for more than an instant. In the moment when the pain is sharpest, the world becomes clear. In that moment, I am a match for anyone. Of course, I am fortunate to have suffered so much. If I did not suffer, I would not aspire to free myself from it. I would wander from one unfulfilling goal to the next. More wealth, a better station. My soul would wither. But to search for a place beyond suffering's reach is to nurture the soul. To harden it against the elements, suffering is the greatest gift the gods have given us. Their most beautiful, perfect creation. It is the hand that turns the wheel. <laughs> gods, no. What a way to travel the world. The usual way is to smear yourself with the ashes of the dead. But they do not burn their dead here. So I have to make do with what the land provides. Hmm. The cold seems to conquer the smell. Even now, the scent hides itself. Disappointing. I was visiting a monastery not far from here. I found it empty, but I met a messenger as I left. He carried a call for aid. Seeing that he would find no monks at the monastery, I chose to go in their place. Zawa is no longer young, but in combat he is still the greatest of the Takan people. It seemed only right that he should go. I would not say I am hired. I seek no wage, and I promise no result. Mm -hmm. I have chosen a path, and my spoils come from walking it. And this fortress, this Durgan's battery, its people are gone. Zawa would know why. Takes up for his eyes fixing on the sky, he remains motionless. Entranced and l at length, he blinks as if awakening and looks back at you. He shrugs cheerily. If one wishes to swim, it is no time to argue with the current. We are here together in this moment because a perfect force has willed it. Who is Zawa to argue? I will walk with you so long as the gods wish it so. Yeah, it's, there's not really anyone I want to leave behind. Um, actually. Uh, he's kind of cool, though. I don't know anything about monks. Kana? I'm trying to think what does Kana do. I don't think Kana does much, honestly. He sings, but... Safe Let's try. Accept. Too predictable! 
mon coureur. Euh, boop. spells than I did before. That's fantastic. Um, yeah. Okay, you are always better without weapons from what I understand. Don't I have something like that? I think I might have sold it. Okay, can he wear any of this stuff? This is what I have to find. I can know, I think I want to get that, but can I? Oh, what the hell were his stats? Might, dex. Okay, might and dex. That's pretty easy, actually. Good question. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to be fighting. I'm going to take slash proof, definitely. You can't put more than one. That's too bad. Well, some, I guess some items can, but. Uh, Dex or might. Uh, might. Yeah, alright, that'll be good for now. Is there anything else I can give him that might be good? <laughs> no, that doesn't look good at all. Neither does that. Whatever. Totally useless, so go away. You can get this, and you can definitely get this. Anyways, alright, so let's see what he does. 
Apparently they're supposed to be unarmed. They're better off when they're unarmed, so we'll keep it that way. What's this? This is the fishery. I was not told to go to the fishery. I was told to go to the temple. That's just a villager. Huh, that's what I get to say. I don't suppose you've seen any mysterious old buildings in the mountains lately, have you? Hmm. No, but I've heard that name a lot around here. I'm looking for the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. It's an obscure temple dedicated to Andra. I'm a gift bearer. My job is to gather tokens of things people want forgotten and surrender them to the Lady of Lament. Best place to do that is the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. Anything that represents a moment or a memory someone wishes to leave behind. Uh, Fair. Love notes, awkward family heirlooms, bad poetry. That kind of I might be here a while. Half the villagers have never heard of the Abbey. And the ones that have, no one knows where it is. So I'm trying to think of this as an extended holiday. In a remote mining village that smells like fish. You won't regret it. I've got a lovely singing voice. So what are you? <laughs> you guys keep wanting me to change my characters. What are you? A barbarian. I mean, I have fun with my barbarian, but I don't have anybody I want to replace right now. A dwarf paces with his head down and arms crossed, only stopping to hurl glances at the building behind him. His face is smeared dark with grime and soot falls from his beard as he mumbles to himself. <clears throat> Work my hands into bloody stumps in this place, and for what? Start with nothing, leave with less. Uh, idiots, that's who. <clears throat> and I'm as much to blame for believing them. Well, good riddance. Should have never settled here in the first place. Some things you mean to leave behind, come to find out, you pack them anyway. But I'm not leaving until I recover what's mine. They can't deny me again. Not after this. Those sweet-tongued priests took my heirlooms, now to memory of my past. They said, now I don't have them that. I don't have even that. Only ones here, they occupied the temple some time ago, picking up desperate folk like vultures. Those priests, Andra's song, Andra's dog said, the goddess would forgive that some things are best left to be forgotten. Their leader, Lafta, I believed her words. Another one of them, a gift bearer, took my medallion. And now they won't tell me where it is. Your problem is that you give meaning to meaningless objects. Here, let me show you something. I need one of your rings. Ankara draws back his hand, but Zahra gives him a trustworthy nod. After the moment's hesitation, Ankara relents, dropping the jeweled band in, in Zahra's outstretched palm. Immediately, Zahra flings it into the lake. See? You are no worse off. Ankara's face already splotched with pink from the cold, turns a deep shade of crimson in his mouth, puckers as though his head were set to him. Flowed. After a tense moment, his breathing slows and his fists unclench, his original look of pain frustration returning. Because they think they know better, that's why. Said it was the only way <clears throat> I'd forget. That was a different life. Better days until. You understand its value. My armor. A set finer than I've ever seen, but worthless to an old run, an old, an old dwarf. I'd have traded it for the medallion, but fool that I was, I gave them both. Not the kind of talk I've ever, I've grown used to these last few years. I admit the priests may pretend otherwise, but folk here tend to look only after themselves. I'd be surprised if they return it willingly. They believe it's a sacred duty to cast the offerings into the goddess, to the goddess in some place where they'll be forgotten. Better to find where they drop them, I think. She leads the group of crows. They took over the temple as folks started to leave. 
came to unburden those that sought to forget their misery here, they say. It belonged to my sister. I was just a pretty trinket to her, to me. She was the last of my family. At least it still acted like family to me. I don't expect luck to grace me now, but if you find anything, I'll be here to count on it. All right, well, that's fine. I'm good with that. So this is the Temple of Adra. Yes, Temple of Adra. I am going. Attack, 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 attack. Kill, kill, kill everyone. Machine guns blazing. Machine guns blazing. Pussy cat is sleeping. Gonna rub his head to disturb him. I just thought of that on a whim. Hello, we are now in the Temple of Ond Andra. That seems all around the time. Before you can take a close look, an acolyte snaps around to face you. Don't touch that. I mean to say, that's sacred to Andra. Please leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Thieves. I'm gonna kill y'all. Andra welcomes you into her embrace. We're here to ease the pain of your past, ready to take your burden. If you let the goddess help you with your hardship, of course. Little happens around here that doesn't end in the mouths of villagers. But we're obliged to assist anyone regardless of their faith. A group of women came to us. Yes, their leaders wanted to know of Durgan's battery. I obliged and pointed them in the right direction. They left as quietly as they arrived, which didn't make us any less concerned about their true intentions. This place grows dangerous enough already. The place has grown dangerous enough already. The dwarf already asked. We gave him the counsel he needed. And naturally, we'll do what we can for you too. Ask what you will. She brings her hands together and nods. Ah, Okram. How often we let the shadows of the past become the burden even to others. That medallion, it weighs on him, Okram's mind. You're kind to help, but what he really needs is to cast away those memories. Okram's soul feeds on regret, starving. It may seem harsh, cruel, but it, if left unchecked, it will consume him until there's nothing left. His belongings, his past, now rest in Andra's realm to be forgotten so that the wounds of the soul may heal. This is the will of the goddess. You think we don't act in accordance with the local customs? The village knows we're here and help to help the unfortunate like Okram. They trust us. No, there isn't, and I hope you realize that it's best to let things as they are. Mmm, no. We came in to aid the village to heal the wounds of the past that, fast t that fester in their souls. Can I attack them? Like, I really want to attack them. Is there any way I can attack them? I said only faithful goddess can touch it. The will of Andra protects it. Ah, I can't keep doing this. Come on, one more. Let me have that fucking... Redemption. That's a common notion. Others may believe so, but the goddess... Mysteries are profound. Her true power lies in redeeming your loss and regret. Gift bears do Andra's most valuable work, valued work. They carry the material burden of unfortunate souls into the embrace so that the goddess may help them forget. Can I? Uh, there has to be a way to do it. Can I kill any of them? I've got nothing for you to speak with left. I must. Good. Let's attack. You want to fight? 
Nope. Ah, they didn't attack me. That sucks. I want them to attack me. Okay, there's gotta be a way to get these guys to give me the thingamajimajigade. I need to get that uh, that thing for the dude. I mean, it's not fair. They, they, he's allowed to change his mind. Do, do, do melee engagements. I love melee engagements. You step outside the heavy wooden door, the temple slams shut behind you. You hear someone borrowing it from the other side. It sounds like the priests have engaged in an agitated conversation. You get the sense that they are discussing you but you're also certain that the door is too thick to eavesdrop through, although there may be other places nearby that you'd stand a better chance. Next time we get the chance, I'm buying you a pint. That means a lot to dare. Oh, do you want one too? Sorry, I meant for Issel me. <laughs> I'll get you one too. <laughs> I love that conversation. The wooden shutters of the temple windows close tight, muffle a set of voices coming from within the building. You can't quite make sense of the murmur, but cracking the shutter open would likely help. Rusty iron latches hold the window shutter closed. With care, you should be able to unfasten it without being noticed. You carefully beginning to lift the latch from the metal hook halfway there. Rusted iron resistance screech you freeze listening to the voices and hope the priest didn't hear the conversation continues uninterrupted. I mean, do I have oil? Uh, you grab the latch and apply uh, the right amount of oil, nudging the metal until it, the rust gives away without a sound. Carefully, you pull the window shutters open and let to let the voices flow through. You hear a man speaking, th his tongue agitated. Too dangerous. Who else will? C his sentence cuts as if the man were speaking, as if the man were speaking to all s sides of the room. But what we do here? What then? Okay, I've lost an item. Oil. You recognize Lafa's voice of finding Why would she? And with all those dangers near the battery, our gift bearer won't delay. I expect the man interrupts. Uh, you're always ex you always expect. Look where there's look where that's taken us. A dying village. Ogres at the walls. Ixley, not back yet. And now I have to do his. P his voice drops to a seething, muffling. Muffling what he has to say. After a moment, Lafleur replies, "Do you think I wanted this? That I could have known in advance?" A pause ensues, its tension growing up until the priest's voice cuts it in half. "We can't wait for him. We must fish out of the last batch quickly. After that, we'll decide. We must fish out the last batch." The man responds in a broken voice, barely audible. You only distinguish the last words. "I'll go." Their exchange seems to end cautiously. You step away from the window of Andra's temple. So I'm supposed to follow this guy, I hope. Didn't I just ask the gift bearer to join me or is she another one? Wait, where did the gift bearer go? Okay, wait, ogre matron. Okay. If I go be okay, then there's the find the gift bear. This is Journey to the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. And this is Okram's lost everything during the attacks against Stalwart before. So where did he go? Me and Sledge are thinking about heading down, joining a caravan over to Donning. Donning? What for? You like your ogres bigger? Uh. 
I don't think he's here anymore. I think he's probably gone. We'd have work at least, and I'm damn sick of fish. Hmm. I don't know which one to do first. Yeah, this way first. I can't wait to see the strength of the um the monk. Lava Rubion Seek. Lava. I love how a bunch of people take mushrooms in this, it's fantastic. River reed. <laughs> Are they all out? Oh yeah, my animat, my dragon. I saw the spider too, I think. I never see the cat though. Yeah, spider's there. Where's the damn cat? Stupid cat. Yeah, um. Mm. Simple shrine covered in a thick layer of snow, fallen leaves and feathers. A pair of curving bones flank the altar. The shrine does not appear to be frequented very often, though the traces of old candle wax still lie on the edges. Under the dying dusting of frost, under a dusting of frost, you note. A rectangular section of the altar's surface that seems to be cleaner than the rest, as if something once rested there. Uh, you feel a triangle run up, a tingle run up your arm as you set your fingers on the uh, to the altar. In the instant after, the wind seems to die down, the sound of the wilderness growing muted to your hearing. Then you hear a sudden low growl, quickly joined by more. A vision strikes you, like a set of memory. Though it is unbound by time or place within a sea of darkness, you see a great beast formless save for its gleaming fangs. It growls and snaps with increasing desperation and savagery, and for a moment you feel its rage as your own, a possessive fury that tears at you. Something has been taken, your territory threatened, and the price for it will be blood. Oh, this is the dragon. I think. That wiped my bot my last party almost completely. Um what did those boots give me? Uh like movement speed? Yeah, you. I think that'd be good for you. You're cute with your little helmet helmet. I think. A group of elves stands in a scattered ring around an ogre, but they do not appear to be engaged in battle. The ogre is bound with rope, and one of the elves tugs harshly on the line tied around the ogre's neck. 
this is pointless beast you won't get anywhere being stubborn the ogre only starts angrily and pulls back on the rope two other elves prod him somewhat timidly with their pole axes the ogre does not budge hey vamrel the elves turn to look at you hence uh, falling to their weapons vamrel gives a final sharp yank to the rope before he turns as well need some help a kind offer, but we have it under control. The beast came along me meekly enough before. I'll have it so again shortly. What do you do there? This creature will accompany us to the Wastron. We'll have some trouble on the road, but having an ogre along should put an end to it. I purchased him from some slave hunters not far from here, looking to rescue their ex to recoup their expenses I expect not sure he's worth quite so much coin I mean fine ah not so fast here beast let's see what you can do I said farewell oh really you gonna attack me well then ah uh, fine I guess if you must die <laughs> I mean, I guess I could give myself something to do too. That would be cool, right? Where's the guy that... For nothing, you die for everything. I mean, that's how I work it. You give me any more gifts, and people will start thinking you're playing favorites. I am playing favorites. Um. Ooh, what was that? Now that looked like a good weapon. What was it? Bitter cut. Minor spellbind an infestation of maggots. Minor spellbind vile thorns sickening. Wow, that sounds just disgustingly fabulous. You do better without weapons, I know that. Um Let's try that. I'm very curious. And while I'm at it, uh, did I just pick up something really nice? Yeah, here, this. Can I? office when crush proof fine so theoretically this is better okay fantastic you can go in there you can go in there oh wait um there's something i just saw wait that is a fine 
in leather armor and you are wearing an exceptional one but you I think he does better in light armor him I, I don't want to yeah I don't want to screw too much with that all right, everybody, that'll be all for this episode. I truly hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, could you see your way to the like button? It helps out the channel a whole lot more than you know. And if you want to keep seeing the rest of this game, please subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be advised every time I drop a vid. Thanks for stopping on by. See you next time. Joe Fouette.